We want to create a college system in an Access 2013 and the most basic item that we want to deal with first of all is students. This is the default view that we see as soon as we create an Access database. Uh, we're set into the data sheet view and we want to design a table. So I'm going to start creating this student's table. We've already been given a primary key field which is labeled ID and we're going to leave that there. And then I'm just going to fill out some of the different types of fields that we might want to record if we were a college administration, uh, keeping track of different students. So the first thing that we might want to do is record people's names. And when I go to click to add in this field section here, I've got a list of different possible data types that I can choose. If I'm trying to deal with a student's name, I'm going to pick short text because it's a text field. And I'm just going to label that field with the actual field name. Now when we're thinking about student names, it might be a good idea to split the name into two fields, one which is forename and one which is surname. So I'm going to type in forename for the first field. And then for the second field here, I'll go click to add again to add another field. It is going to be the surname field, so it's going to be short text as the data type. And I'm going to put in surname there as well. So that's the forename of the surname. I might also want to choose to add in an address for the student as well. So again, I'll go to click to add. Short text again. Again, if I was going for a real table rather than just an example table, I might split the address into address 1, address 2, and address 3. Uh, but just for this example, I'm just going to keep it all in one field and label address. Other things we might want to uh, keep track of uh, in terms of a student is we might want to take their phone number. Now their phone number is interesting. Your initial reaction might be to go for number as the data type. But if we think about a uh, phone number, uh, the number that's there is never something that we're going to multiply or divide. It's never something that's going to be part of any kind of mathematical operation. Also, there's some different special characters that are added into a phone number um, that m give it more, uh, more information. For instance, if it's an international number, we might put a plus in front of it. Or if we've got area codes, you might wrap those area codes in round brackets. So for that reason, oftentimes database administrators, they used a short text data type uh, to keep track of a phone number field. So I'll label that field phone. And then I've got one more field here. Uh, I might want to keep track of a student's date of birth. So I'll go date and time for that. And I'll just label that DOB. And that's my table designed. I'm going to save that table just by going up to the top left and clicking Save Diskette. And I'll just put in the name of the table. Usually table names, we try and keep them the plural version of whatever entity has been recorded in the different records in that table. So in this case, I'm going to name that table students. Click OK. And there is my table. You can see the actual student's name pop up here on my left pane and that table in datasheet view is ready to take data. I'm going to go ahead and enter in some dummy data into this table just so that we can see it taking shape. So uh, I'm going to skip the actual ID field. I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll just put in uh, some information about uh, an imaginary student. And what you'll see is as soon as you start typing data into this record. Because the ID field was automatically put in by access, and because the ID field data type is actually an auto number data type, that means that we've handed over the responsibility of keeping that as a unique identifier. We've handed over that job over to access. And that makes our job a lot easier because we don't have to keep track or make sure that we're putting in unique numbers there might seem simple at the beginning, but if you've got a much bigger table that's sorted by some other field, you'll often find it's very difficult to be sure that you're picking out a unique code for every new record that you put in. So I'll continue on. We'll just fill this out with two more records. And I'm just coming to the end of putting in this third record here. Now, one thing I want to point out is every time that you're editing a record in Access, uh, over here on this indicator bar, we often see a pencil icon. That means that the database management system has picked out that record and you're editing it at the moment. It hasn't been committed yet to the database. And that means that anybody else who's using this database at the same time, if they run any query, that record won't be included in it until it's committed. 
the way that you know it's committed is as soon as you move off the record or you click off it that means that that record has been slotted back into the database and that's the first video in this series just creating a basic table in 2013 in the next video we'll add in a courses table and relate the courses and the students table together